Hello everyone, and welcome back to Anime on Draft. I am your host, Alec. Um, I am joined here today with my co-hosts, Drew. Hello. And Rolando. Yo. Today we are bringing you episode 19. Uh, so we've got a couple cool things in store for you, like the beer, which is actually a pretty interesting choice that we got from Mr. Drew over here. It's the Garage Brewing Co. Marshmallow Milk Stout. So right away you hear marshmallow and you're like, hmm, pretty cool. So what made you pick this, uh, Drew? What, what led you to, to picking this one? Well, I uh, was looking in BevMo and nothing caught my eye um, when I was looking in ales and things like that or IPAs because that's usually what I go for. And I don't know, we'd just gone camping and something about marshmallows kind of appealed to me, um, even though it is a stout. Um, so went ahead and grabbed this guy. You know, I, I'm a fan of marshmallows. Um, don't know how well it will translate to beer. I know in the like e-cigarette vape niche world, marshmallow does not vape translate niche? well. So, uh, wanted to give this a try. It's generally pretty hit or miss. I feel like marshmallow stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, either really good or really awful. Like jelly beans. Yeah, like watermelon IPAs or whatever. <laughs> Tastes like a Jolly Rancher. Oh, you then. mean the water, the watermelon Dorado? Yeah, the watermelon mm-hmm. That's a Dorado. Double IPA that I already had watermelon. said. Was not good. I did not I remember that that was I didn't the one you mind it. I didn't like it. I didn't it. mind <laughs> it. I mean, it's not it's not good. I wouldn't buy it by choice, but I'll drink it. If it's there, you'll finish them. My mm-hmm. issue was like, it just tasted like I was eating a Jolly Rancher. And that was the last thing I wanted at that point in my life. <laughs> to me, it Anyways. tastes like you're... So the watermelon Dorado tastes like someone liquefied a Sour Patch watermelon piece and then it dropped it into your mouth and then afterwards you tasted hops. <laughs> That's what it Like a lot of hops. <laughs> like a so, lot of hops. So at this point, uh, we're going to switch gears and we're going to review the Watermelon Dorado, which none of us have in front of us. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, so let's get back to the, the, the beer at hand. Um, did you guys already pour out your beers? Yep. Sure did. All right. So... I'm just going to throw it out there from the start. It's dark, like you would expect from a stout, but like really dark. Uh, And the head is kind of that cream, foamy color. Typical stout. It looks like a Guinness, but it doesn't taste like a Guinness. (laughs) No. The marshmallow smell kind of makes it smell like root beer. It kind of smells like a s'more to me. It smells awful. I really don't (laughs) like how it smells. It kind of smells like like a overcooked s'more. it smells like, to me, and my sense of smell is awful, but to me, it smells like spoiled milk with, like, a <laughs> sweetness of, like, sweet fermentation. That's what it smells hmm. like to me. I don't go around smelling spoiled milk, so I don't know what that smells like. It does smell pretty bad. You never, like, open up the fridge much. and you're, like, te- testing your milk and it's like, well, this is definitely bad. Like, that's what it <laughs> smells like <laughs> to me. That smells... That sounds awful. I uh, I generally don't drink milk, but I have smelt spoiled milk. I don't get sm- spoiled milk. I get like I get the just toasty like over the fire kind of marshmallow smell. So I don't get any toastiness so at all. Each their own. I smell. I'm gonna like switch. I can't swig you. I I can't smell. I smell like some sweetness, but yeah, to me it just smells like spoiled milk. I mean, it tastes better than it smells like. But <laughs> tastes like a stout. It's got a lot of sweetness to it, though. What it's a really sweet stout. Like it, I still keep getting like reminded toasty. of root beer. Really? Yeah. Huh. Even with I the don't taste. get root beer or spoiled milk. I get like, yeah, it just kind of tastes like you roasted a marshmallow and put it on a graham cracker, but not graham cracker <laughs> flavor. It's just that if I'm gonna <clears throat> kind of burnt marshmallow taste. If I'm going to kind of like compare it to root beer, it'll be like a more creamier root beer, like a Henry Weinhardt. Um, it wouldn't be like a super spicy root beer. No, I'm thinking um, of something like Virgil's. Like, like, yeah, like it, it wouldn't be like a uh, St. Arnold's or something along those lines. It's it's not very spicy. It's just like it's got like kind of the consistency of a root beer. 
So it's not like sarsaparilla creamy, creaminess. No, no, not at all. Yeah, I don't get, I don't get any of that. But you know, I'm trying here. It's like, I guess, hmm, if you smell it a bunch of times, you can kind of get it, or I can kind of get it, the root beer. But it still smells more like toasted marshmallow to me. It does at least have marshmallow flavor, um, and it's actually like a decent marshmallow flavor. It's not like, mm-hmm. oh my god, this is like awesome marshmallow flavor, but it's like, <clears throat> it's good. Like it's there. It's not like unbearable. Like I was saying, like with the vapes, like I've gotten like multiple because I, I like marshmallow, but it's like I've gotten like multiple like flavors from different companies, and it's just like it tastes like ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're vaping lighter fluid or something. It's like really bad. And it's just bad. <clears throat> yeah, mine's also it's not, not that cold though. Mm. Oh really? Maybe I, that has something. I bought to do it with like it? an hour ago. Right. Throw some ice in there, dude. That'll that'll make it taste really <laughs> good. That'll just dilute <laughs> the flavor. I do have to say though that like what you were saying about how it's not bad marshmallow, it is kind of similar to like if you had um coconut and you can have coconut like fake coconut that's awful. And then some coconut that's like decent. It's kind of like that. Yeah. If you have like decent coconut, but it's not like real coconut on something or whatever. It's so that's kind of how I see it. But like we're talking <clears> about <throat> like coconut good. flavor too. I definitely like coconut and like peanut butter better in a stout than marshmallow. I think it, the sweetness kind of gets lost and it's just like milk and sweetness but mm-hmm. like when you have like a coconut stout or like a peanut butter stout or like even chocolate or coffee you can like get those distinct flavors and i think they enhance the flavor whereas this is just kind of like eh, it's like it's not bad it's not good it's just like it's there um yeah i think the other flavors I are agree. more intense and they they help whereas this is just like doesn't hinder or help in either way I agree. Yeah, you kind of get more sweetness because of the marshmallow, so it's like a sweeter than if you just had a stout or whatever. If you had like an imperial stout, it's sweeter than that. But you don't get like I don't. It's it's hard to pick up the flavors, and it, when you get it, it's like very faint. Whereas with peanut butter, you get a lot of like the Belching Beaver peanut butter stout. It's definitely peanut butter, and coconut mm-hmm. stouts you definitely get coconut. Um, so I agree. It definitely is a lot lighter and just weaker in flavor than the other options that are out there. But, you know, it tastes pretty good still. It definitely tastes stouty. It's not like a weird kind of like off from stout or anything like that, which mm-hmm. I love my stout. So I, I actually like it pretty, pretty well. But um, how about we go ahead and throw out our ratings for this? Um, let's start with uh, the one who picked it up, uh, Drew. Drew. What do you think? I mean, we, I don't want to beat a dead horse or anything like that. Um, it's its like all the things we talked about. It's got marshmallow flavor, but it's not good or bad. It's just middle of the road. Um, <clears throat> it's a little too sweet for my taste. I don't like sweet things very much. Um, I don't know. Overall, I'd probably rate it like a 2.7. It's um, its just mediocre. I I. I would maybe drink it again, but in terms of like drinkability, you can have like one or two, and you're like, I'm kind of over this. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> cool. All right. What about you, Rolando? Yeah. Um. I don't know if it's because mine's not that cold, but I mean, I, I don't think it's very good. <laughs> um. I don't know if it's like because it's it's not cold. It's detracting from like the stout. Or that's the marshmallow that's detracting from it. Mm-hmm. Like, what I'm kind of thinking is that it's the marshmallow that's detracting from it. And to me, it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's a stout. It's not like a great stout. But, <laughs> I mean, but it's I can drink it. It's drinkable. <laughs> um, yeah, that's like where I am too. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't want to like, judge it based off of the fact that it's not like as you know like as cold as it should be but like i feel like even if i drank something like the belching beaver um when it was like when it's the temperature i have it right now like i still wouldn't think that that would be a bad beer um i don't think this is a terrible beer but i don't think it's a great beer but um i'm gonna give it a two and a half Mm. 
I, I don't think that's uncalled for. I'm kind of in the same area boat as um as Drew for for my choice. I'm thinking like 2.7, 2.75. I it tastes like a stout. And like you go you guys have both said that you can drink it. Um but I I probably like if I bought it again, it would just be like <clears throat> if it were on sale <laughs> or if somebody really wanted to try a marshmallow stout and just see what we were talking about. But uh, I could not. We had a six pack and we split it, uh, Drew and I. And uh, I'm glad I only have three because I think if I had the whole six pack, I would it would sit in my fridge for a while. So I'm going to go two point mm. seven five just because I like round numbers. But yeah, I'm pretty much in the same sen- sentiments as you guys. So. Not to put Should've down the, the brewery, uh, though. The mango half. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to try that mango half and the and the blueberry cream ale. It's just that... The mango half sounded good. I did not oh, think that I this looked like a good uh, flavor in the first place. And, like, tasting it now, I'm just like, yeah, you know, I kind of see why I didn't think it was going to be a good flavor. <laughs> Man, if, I, yeah. if they had the... Or I saw the blueberry cream, I would have tried that. That sounds a lot better. <laughs> Was it an ale or like IPA or what was it? Like? It was a cream ale. <clears throat> oh, so oh, so like the California cream in, but yeah. blueberry. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that does sound really good. We next time, next time we'll try that one on the next show. Because <laughs> we've never had. Have you guys ever had anything from Garage Brewing Co. before? No. Either no. I. Like they'll. Right. We'll, we can have them. Their redemption. On a, on a different episode. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back and we'll be like, this one is great. Go for this one all the time. <laughs> all right. Well, let, you know, let's move on. We'll go talk about our, our animes for the week. Um, so we all watched Soccer Request and Classroom of the Elite this week, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. let's go ahead and start out with the Soccer Request. Personally, I think this one was kind of cool because it, it went kind of went back to the first season. Uh, or the big, not the first season, I guess our first season, the beginning of the show uh, with Maki, because this episode really had like, they really talked about Maki a lot. And I just kept thinking of her as Mopey Maki. I don't know if anybody else was name. getting kind con- <laughs> I did. That's why, because now it, there's an alliteration. <laughs> but <laughs> I remember when I was watching it, I was like, what's the actor bitch's name? And you're like, Maki? I'm like, yeah, she's super Mopey. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I don't know. What did you guys think about? about bringing back Maki's struggles again and any resolution this time that you, you kind of felt was nice or what'd you think about it? Uh, either of you. Um, I mean, it's just more the same for her. My, I hate my dad for no reason, but it's like not even justified because he's just like wants the best for his daughter and she's too stubborn to kind of realize it. And then she's being all mopey, like, I don't want to go to this acting school with this guy and I could get a movie part because I'm too proud and I moved back home and gave up on everything. And her dad, like, wants to push her, but he's too proud and be like, she can make her own decisions. I shouldn't have to influence her, but I'm still going to be mad. It's just more the same. Um, I thought it was a boring episode, uh, to be honest, but I don't really like Maki as a character for the above reasons. (laughs) Uh, that I stated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's um, kind of yeah, dull. <laughs> no, she's definitely dull. I agree. <laughs> she's my least favorite of all the girls. Um, I kind of... So I saw this episode, was it yesterday or, or something? And I thought it was... Uh, they, were, they, they did a lot of developing for Maki in the episode... And here's what I'm going to talk about as my main point. And I feel like they did a good job of, you know, like showing the relationship between her and her father. Like they're both similar people. They both like don't like to they're not they're not the type of people to enjoy losing or being wrong, you you know, Mm -hmm. so they that ends up putting them at odds with each other. But at the same time, like they if you think about it, they actually do care about what the other thinks because it's like obviously Maki's father wants her to be successful. And he even says, like, you should go and like, I don't care if you like make a living, but you I want you to be happy doing what you like um, and not seeing you like 
just going through like emotions of life. And Maki's kind of like avoiding her father because she's afraid that he's mad at her for not doing what he envisioned her to do. And so they're kind of at odds at that. And when well, she's scared to fail again, and he doesn't really care that she fails um, as long as she like keeps trying and things like that. But she can't really see that. I don't know if it's like necessarily like failing, but I feel like she doesn't have she doesn't have the confidence to do what she likes um, for a living because she doesn't feel like that is what her father would approve of. And in a sense, she doesn't even approve of it herself. And so it leads, you know, to the end of the episode, which I I said this yesterday and I s- said it kind of felt out of nowhere where she all of a sudden decides to go to that audition because mm-hmm. like, oh, now Sanaya and Yoshino are like, oh, yeah, like we really want you to do this. Like, don't you don't want to regret it. And then she goes from being like, I don't give a shit to, oh, you know what? Yeah, I care. And like, it just felt like that particular, like the movement for her to actually want to do it. There was a disconnect because throughout the whole episode, like we see that she actually does love acting, especially like when she talks to Ririko, like about like Mm -hmm. how, like she needs to be able to connect feelings to get, because Ririko wants to to sing the the song across on the internet Mm -hmm. and you know, put her Nico Nico video up there. Um, (laughs) But like, I felt like there was a disconnect because I didn't see the development for her motivation. You know, like it didn't seem like she, she, she didn't, she still didn't seem like she had the drive to want to go to the audition. It kind of felt like, Oh, everyone like supports me now. I'm going to go do it. It's like, I still haven't felt that change in her that, to show that she really wants to act, you know? Mm-hmm. I yeah, honestly it, felt it more... Felt, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I, I, I honestly felt more of a change in the two minutes that the fucking director of the tourism board was on screen than I did for all the episodes that Maki's been centered on. Because he has, like, that kind of heart-to-heart with Yoshino and says, like, you know, I, I did fuck up when I was younger and I feel responsible and I, I want to make things better. That was, like, a better character development in the two minutes that he was on screen than the entire time that Maki has had screen time. I don't know if it's that they just the producers just don't like her or... Or they're not like putting a lot of like, you know, time into her character and things like that, because I think it could be interesting. But at the end of the day, it's just like uh, I'm angsty and sad for my career choices and my dad hates me, but he doesn't really hates me. uh, So I'm going to go do this thing anyway. Like, it's just I don't know. It's it's boring to me. (laughs) Excuse me. Yeah, I definitely think the the way they tried to progress her at the end, like by making her go to Tokyo for the acting thing, it felt super rushed because she came back and they're like, why aren't you doing this? And then they like close up on her face and she's like, hmm, and she runs up the stairs and then next thing you know, she's on the train. And so like you said, it, you're not, it's not, I'm not really sure if she actually has made a change or if she's just like going through the motions like she is with everything else. But uh, if she did, if that is her making a change, then it was super ultra rushed. I also agree. One of my favorite parts of the episodes, Drew, was when the old man was on the screen and he had the the sign on him that was like, sign, I yeah. screwed up the festival. <laughs> and he's like, it's like being right. in stocks. <laughs> and they're like, no one's here. So <laughs> why would we have stocks? <laughs> but uh, that was I, I was laughing a lot when he had that sign on him. And the guy was like, oh, nice sign. He's like, leave me alone. <laughs> the old man was a good character in this one. But her whole like development was rushed and kind of random at the end there for sure. Um, and then one, one other point I want to make the best part of the, arguably the best part of the episode was the very beginning with the blood soaked Santa story or whatever. (laughs) Uh, It's like the blood soaked Santa. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Blood soaked. And then her Maki's mopey Maki's dad shows up and she's like, it's a gorilla. (laughs) It's just like, what the fuck is going on? That was just really really odd. My, my favorite part of the episode was they were having dinner at Maki's house 
and both Maki and her father start bickering with one another, and then the mom just fucking yells. She's like, shut the oh, yeah. fuck up. This is my day. It's my birthday. You will not It's my birthday, fight. bitches. Yeah. And then they're just like, sorry. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. And they yeah, have delicious funny. hot pot. I want hot pot. Dude, hot pot sounds good. I want ramen. Uh, anyways, before we start talking about food, uh, let's move on to the, the next show that I actually really like this episode, uh, Classroom of the Elite. So for this episode, how about you give us a quick synopsis on what happened, Drew, and maybe some thoughts on on the episode. So we kind of have our court date or whatever you want to call it. Um, Basically, Class D versus Class C, Clash of the Titans. Um, We have I'm I'm just going to call him stupid idiot basketball bitch because that's what he is. Um, you know, <laughs> arguing his point of beating up the three kids from Class C and then bringing in witnesses and talking about that. Um, we also have uh, the student council president, which is uh, Horikita uh, Horikita's uh, brother presiding, and then like even um, the Class D homeroom teachers, like, oh, you decided to like come to this? He's like, oh yeah, my schedule just so happened to coincide, and I was able to come. It's like you know he has like some alternative motive uh, going on there. But basically, we hear both sides of the uh, the story. I think the biggest twist was a uh, Sakura, the girl with the uh, half frame glasses and pink hair. Um, she comes in and actually testifies when we didn't think she was going to and it turns out like she's a model but she's like she's like a total shy when she's not a model but like when she's modeling she's like hot as fuck (laughs) like the thing the thing that it's like what the fuck yeah like (laughs) and the 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 thing that did make sense to me she's like super conservative um when she's talking to everybody and then she just so happens to be in the hallway like taking a selfie of herself and then the the dudes who are brawling are like there in the background like that didn't make very much sense to me but I and don't she know. didn't it is, notice it is what it is <laughs> <laughs> she's just like oh they're there and then she like she probably like sees them and just like runs away because that's like the type of character she is but right. um other other than that you know we kind of um we have the uh the homeroom teacher of class uh, c kind of give this like ultimatum like hey you know bitch basketball boy is gonna get uh suspended what was it for like two weeks rolando or four weeks they were gonna suspend him for two um, weeks and class c guys yeah, for one week f- for one week that's right um and they kind of throw that over to Horikta because she's like the class representative that they didn't vote on, but she just is now, I guess. But she is. <laughs> um, yeah, like, and and then she's like, no, I'm not going to stand for this. Like, our side is innocent and we're going to be able to prove it to you somehow. So the, uh, the student council president basically says, well, I'll give you guys a recess, you know, collaborate, bring everything together and then prove to me that your side is correct over the other side. So that's basically the, the basic overview of... Uh, Kind of what happened. I, th- I thought it was a good episode. Um, the my favorite part, and I know you guys all agreed, is when uh, Iona QG is like fucking molesting Horita to make her like pay attention <laughs> to what's going on. He's just like fucking grabbing her like f- her like love handle fat and be like, "Hey, hey, say something, bitch! Like get back to reality!" <laughs> like and she's like fucking Wake like up. squealing to it. <laughs> yeah. Like that was terrible. Yeah, that was like that was for, she minutes. stands up and. Eh, eh. And he's like yeah. rationalizing it too in his head, and he's just like, "This is the only way to make her stand up and say what she needs to say." Because yeah, he's teacher, she's talking like, like that. "Hell yeah, good job." She's like yeah, watching it. She's like, just like closes her eyes and grins. He's like, "Yeah, this is tight." So like, I know what he's doing. I know what he's doing. Uh, <laughs> I thought sense. it was a good episode. I think it's gonna be. I think it's really good setup for like whatever comes next. And I think it'll be exciting to see, you know, what kind of, how they come to a conclusion. Uh, I'm sure it'll be the main character doing something cool or whatever, just cause that's the type of character he is. But I really, I enjoyed this episode. Uh, I, the, the random, the one other thing though, the, that I, I remember about this episodes, but besides, uh, the, the tickling of the love handles is the creepy camera guy. You guys remember him? Oh, oh when, that fucker. <laughs> yeah, when Sakura is trying to fix her fucking camera and he's like, can I get your cell phone number? And it's like, <laughs> they like show his breath. I'm like, oh God, this dude's such a creep. Like, yeah. he, probably knows, he probably knows like, she's that, the uh, that she's the model. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He like stalks yeah. her and shit. Because it's, you know, the whole trope of you put on glasses and you look like a completely different person. 
Yeah, it's like who yeah, are you? You're not you're not hot anymore. <laughs> you're no longer yeah. like you no hideous. longer look remotely close to what you looked like before. It's you're just so like, different. It's the, and your personality it's changes. Syndrome. It's the super. It's your Kent. fucking personality changes. Like soccer, Kent at, soccer at Kent. I have to say though, the fir- the very beginning of the episode, I felt was like weird because it's just like, why the fuck are you talking about? Like, I know why he's talking about philosophy, but at the same time, it's like, why the fuck are you talking about philosophy? They could have just, had just like goes. done it better than have Ayana Koji have an inner monologue about fucking philosophy. It's yeah. like <laughs> with the title of the episode in a completely <laughs> better way. And I feel like that's one of the things where it's like, yeah, this was a visual novel. Like that's something you fucking read. And then like they're just like, how do we translate this? Oh, I don't know. Just have the main character fucking say it in his head. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Why not just put it up on the screen and then you read it? Yeah, like honestly, I felt like, <laughs> like that would, it would have been better if they did that because it was just like, just, why the fuck is he randomly talking about philosophy right now? <laughs> just throw it up for a couple seconds and then <laughs> let's go yeah. into the episode. Either way, I'm curious. Uh, sorry, I'm curious to see um, in terms of like the school rules and promotions and demotions, things like that. If uh, one side comes out without a suspension and they figure out like the plan of class C, cause I, we already know like the insight that they kind of stage the whole thing. Um, I'm curious to see if that will promote their class because another class has had a suspension and things like that. So I, I think that'll be interesting if that's what ends up being <clears throat> the development th- from uh, the court case. I think, well, he's also adding expulsion. I too. think if, um, Mm-hmm. If what happens, because like I, I feel like this is a way for the student council president, um, Susan A's brother to, because he also finds I think he might find that class C dude, um, that's kind of in charge of everything, he might find that that dude somewhat troublesome, so mm-hmm. maybe he would expel that guy because like clearly he's gonna like it's truth is gonna come to light that he is the mastermind behind behind all of it. Maybe he gets expelled. The other guys get suspended. Nobody gets expelled or suspended in class double D's. And um, <laughs> and and they get promoted to class C. So, like, I feel like they'll take all of class C's points and then, you know, be promoted. Yeah, something Class like C, that, yeah. parentheses, double D's. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That sounds like probably what's going to happen. <laughs> Most likely. But... All in all, I enjoyed this episode. I think it's good setup for the next episode. I really actually like this show. It's gotten kind of better with each episode for me, more interesting. Mm-hmm. It's definitely one of those shows for me where I'm not like checking the time where like or I'll I'll definitely, see the end coming yeah. and I'm like, "No, don't be over yet. Like show more." But then they never do. So, yeah, it's, it's kind, kind of an interesting moment. premise. Mhm. Yeah, and the main character, even though, like, I know there's a lot of shows where, like, main characters are OP, and clearly this main character is OP. Like, he's a genius of some mm-hmm. kind. He's good at martial arts and, like, could clearly destroy anyone in the school, and he's good at manipulating people. But, like, he's actually kind of an interesting OP character as opposed to just an OP, OP character. Yeah, he's which not one I, of those, he chooses to be average. Yeah, he's not one of those OP yeah. characters where they're just like, hey, look at how fucking OP he is. They're not, you know, look like at flashing how it at like, like Kirito mm-hmm. or, yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, hey, look, this guy is OP, but he doesn't fucking care to let you know about it. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. think Adriel would like this character. No. He's, he's not, not OP enough. enough. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Anyways, <laughs> uh, so ne- I'm looking forward to next week, next week's episode, but um, I'm going to move on to some of these notes that we have here about news stuff. So Drew, you mentioned that the newest season of Monogatari has finished airing in two days, correct? So are you yeah, watching so that right now? Or? Uh, I'm going to watch it and actually make like a recorded audio of like not my reaction but like what i think of the episode um i've heard nothing but good things about this show it has the second highest rating on mal uh, currently and rising it might be first now um but everywhere that i've seen like 
trying to avoid spoilers and saying like they're saying like this is one of the best arcs for uh, Monogatari. And this is what they do. They release they release things like all together. Like they release like the first three episodes um, on the first day. It's like a 45 minute, like almost like half movie or whatever you want to call it. Um, I won't say the name of that particular arc because it's super spoilery. Um, and then they release like a kind of backstory. Um Everyone's saying it's kind of like they wanted to get Senjo Gahara in somehow for fan service. Um, so they threw her in there, giving kind of like a recap of what's going on. And then the final arc um, of the last two episodes, um, it's like, I, I believe it's two episodes. So for six total, um, something along those lines um, also aired. So it's completed. There's one more season um, if it's following the light novels. And they've been pretty loyal to that. Um, so look forward to my... Um, audio not reaction but audio take on uh, the season uh like i said everyone has said nothing but good things about it so i'm really looking forward to a day where i'm not drunk to uh analyze it because otherwise i won't know what the fuck is going on you won't know what's just going don't go on golfing <laughs> yeah i won't know what's going on anyways that's fair just don't go golfing and you'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> well i gotta go golfing yeah, you have to go golfing. So you know, but I you're gonna have, have to. to. You're gonna have to do it, then go golfing. You're gonna have to watch it. Then <laughs> I might watch it tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. For sure. Well, keep your eyes peeled or eyes and ears peeled for Drew's uh, audio blog post about that. Um, another season of anime that is we don't know the date for yet, but we know at least one of our listeners is excited for. That's the third season of Code Geass, right? Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. we don't know when that comes out. We know one of our listeners, Nick, he's going to be definitely excited about that. I'm sure he already knows. Yeah. He loves that show. He's going to show everyone. Let let me, let me put this into perspective. Okay. So the first two seasons of Code Geass came before Gundam 00. So this is what Sunrise worked on before Gundam 00. And there have been like three Gundam series you know, after that one. (laughs) So, um, this is, this is like a 10 year gap between, um, between seasons. So it's, that's worse than attack on Titan. Yeah, it is. But like, (laughs) again, like nobody thought there would be a third season of code. Yes, because the story ended after the second season. So they're trying to make it better. I I don't know. Like (laughs) they're, if you haven't seen Code Geass, you're, you're going to get spoiled just by the, the title they're going to call the third season, which is Lelouch of the Resurrection. So, um, like, if you knew the first season was Lelouch of the Revolution, so clearly, somehow, this dude is not going to be dead anymore and is going to be resurrected. So, I, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck they're doing. Spoilers. They're, they're pulling some... <clears throat> Deus Ex Machina shit. I don't know. Maybe this is like a in between one and two season. No, because the end of season one is the beginning of season two. Oh, I don't know then. Maybe it's a side story. Uh, no, they already have side stories. <laughs> they oh. said it's. I don't it's know direct, then. It's fuck like it. it's after season two. Oh, they said yeah. that. Oh, well then, fuck, man. Who knows? <laughs> well, be excited. Uh, all you Code Geass fans, and look forward to that. Um, another one that I'm really excited for, you guys just mentioned that there's the third season, possibly third season of Konosuba, because the 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 studio said that they're working on something? or It's Pachinko. It's not Pachinko. They said, <laughs> <they're>, <laughs> on the fucking radio, on the radio show, um, Megumin and um, fucking Kazuma... His uh, their voice act actor Kazuma, actress Kazuma. duo. They announced like in tears <clears throat> that there was going to be a new anime project for Konosuba. So it's not going to be. They announced it after the second OVA that just came out was uh, was released. So it's definitely not <clears throat> announcing that. So a lot of people are saying like, oh, they're probably announcing a third season or a sp- or the Mega Bean spinoff. But who knows. I hope it's a third season of the the whole show because I love that show. Dude, yeah. They could make like season after season. And if it were even similar to the first two, I would be happy. Well, they like, have enough material. I don't know. I'm, I'm, 
a, Me- a Mega Man spinoff would be would be cool, like either way, because like there, the a lot of people are comparing it to like uh, how Raildex uh, went, where you still get like your characters, like the Tomon and like all those characters, like together. You just get focused on Mega Man and probably Union. So I, I think I think it would still be good. Union, yeah, it would be cool. I, I can, is Por qué no los dos? I mean, well, even <laughs> even if it was just a straight third season, it would focus on those two characters. Mm. That's what Mega Man and Union. Let's bring back Union. Yeah, she's the coolest character after they, Aqua. They have like <laughs> I think they're on like the twelfth volume of the light novel, and the third season would cover like five and six is what would if they mm. keep going the same pace they've been going. So there's a lot mm-hmm. of material to cover if they want to. How many thinking. do they have total? Twelve. Twelve. Oh, yeah. okay. Did you say that and I just didn't hear it? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's my bad. Uh, so yeah, that's awesome. Well, uh, clearly this this beer might be affecting me a little bit, um, but I'm super excited for that one. Probably kind of how how uh, Nick feels about Code Geass there, but uh, either way, third season Mega Man spinoff something. It'll be fun to have all our characters back and get to watch them do their antics and blow things up and well, wreck one of them parties. Is one of them will blow things up. The other one will ruin things, and then, <laughs> and then they'll, and then Cosmo will have to find a way to fix it, and they'll look like heroes, even though they're the problem to begin with. But <laughs> um, finally, our last little bit of news is actually going to be game related, so not anime related. Um, our host here, Drew, is a huge Dota fan, and uh, recently the Dota International actually just finished, and uh, he informed us that it's an odd year because a team from China did not win so that's cool uh what you know what are your thoughts on that drew yeah every uh non-chinese team gave team liquid their energy held their hands up (laughs) high and uh they were able to come out on top it was a good uh, lower bracket run by a team liquid they are a like a mixed european squad they have like a dude from like jordan and lebanon and a couple different places but mainly like a european uh style team and uh, you know ran it back uh from the lower bracket and won like 10.3 million dollars between five of them so that's a a pretty yeah. big uh accomplishment uh there and they money. swept the finals yeah they swept the finals 3-0 uh, which is super yeah. super impressive. Um, so now That's we're good. in the uh, the time period of uh, reshuffles. We'll see what lineups stay together, um, which groups disband. There's already rumors uh, going around the uh, the Reddit mill, and it's always uh, fun to read during this time of year. Uh, my EG boys uh, didn't do so hot, but uh, there's rumors that they're going to stay together, and then there's rumors that they're breaking up. So who the fuck knows? Um, like but overall, a really, a really good, uh, <laughs> right? It's just like a, every every team like recycles their players, and they're like, this team's gonna be the best. No, this team's gonna be best, and all the super <laughs> teams end up sucking. So it's like whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, it was a good tournament to watch. Um, the meta is really dif- uh, like pretty diverse right now. You can literally play any hero. I think there was like maybe seven heroes out of like the hundred something pool that weren't played. So that's like pretty crazy. Or banned. Um, a lot of strategy. No, yeah, I think well, banning is a whole different. Yeah, thing, well, like, but, what if they were um, included in the bans? What if it was one hundred percent? They were. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you're not gonna ban like Pudge or like uh, who else? Like, yeah, you're not um, going to. <laughs> like Techie, no, Techies isn't even in Captain's draft, but whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it, like I said, it was a good tournament. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the scene shapes up. Uh, there's probably going to be a big patch now that uh, the big tournament's over. Give everybody a couple months to get used to that um, and then go from there. Um, another big thing that Valve announced is a new game. So they have a new IP um, and it's going to be a card game based on Dota. <laughs> um, I am actually really IP? looking forward to it. Well, I mean... Yes, they own it. They, <laughs> Blizzard tried to sue them for it, and they said no. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm actually, I'm actually really looking forward to it because I can't put in the time that I would like to play Dota because 
each game is like 40 minutes to like an hour and 20 minutes and the time and dedication it takes to get good at that is just not something i have right now so it would be, I, and i love watching dota i love the dota lore and things like that so i think it would be cool to play a game that is much faster paced um that works similarly to dota but is a card game so it, it a lot of people are hating on it i think it'll be interesting i don't know if it'll be good or not i mean everybody's making a card game now um but you know we'll see we'll see how it works it from what everybody's saying it's a little bit different than your general like hearthstone versus uh gwent and all those different things um it actually is like playing dota you draft five heroes mm-hmm. you send stuff down lanes um it it should be pretty interesting so we'll see how it like works. a um, turn-based strategy card like game. dota card game yeah i i don't know <laughs> how exactly it's gonna work um so we'll keep our eyes peeled on that in the coming uh could be pretty interesting months. yeah so i have a quick I mean, question it's, bring it's them back. yeah no go ahead go ahead i was, I was just gonna say it's to like good for newcomers national. it's good to the newcomers to the scene because like i know a lot of people like the international gets a lot of news because of the prize pool. It was like a twenty-four million dollar prize pool this year or something. So it, it gets like international and like actually like normal people news and things like that. Um, and so for people who are looking more for like that style of game without having to learn how to play Dota, because learning how to play Dota is a fucking nightmare. Um, I don't recommend anybody go and start playing Dota who doesn't. <laughs> like play a MOBA because it's very challenging and you'll get frustrated and the community is shit. Um, (laughs) It's awesome to watch. Like, especially if you know what's going on, it's like awesome to watch, but like trying to play that game is like impossible. Um, But this, this will give like newcomers like something to do into the scene. And like really valve hasn't made a bad IP in years. So it's, got to be at least interesting um i've said that about blizzard too and then blizzard made heroes of the storm and that game is awful (laughs) (laughs) yeah that that game is not top tier at all whatsoever it's because they're just jealous that league and dota are still going strong and they're like damn we fucked up i mean they had their chance and then they did you know they decided they they blew it 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 only started with as a mod for one of their (laughs) games yeah (laughs) which they could have picked up but they didn't and then an interesting side note on the Warcraft 3 scene. Um, they just opened up a PTR for Warcraft 3. So they just released Starcraft uh, Starcraft 1 remastered. So maybe they're going to release um, Warcraft 3 remastered. That'd be cool. I mm-hmm. like Warcraft 3. I like I like playing the story mode of that RTS. I don't like playing competitively, but Warcraft 3 was a lot of fun. I remember I used to play with yeah. my buddy back in the day. Uh, or well, I'd you know we'd take turns playing, but that was a fun one to do the story mode on. When the <clears> Warcraft <throat> lore is so good, like especially like Frozen Throne, mm-hmm. like that shit's tonight. That's something that Blizzard does better than mostly everybody else, and that's lore. Like their lore in yeah. their games are just dope. Like WoW's lore, yeah. even when their expansions suck, the lore is still really good. And like the story yeah. alone, you could just watch the videos and be like, I. Didn't play the game, but I was really entertained by this. And so it's like that's something they do spectacularly. Yeah. Yeah. But a uh, quick question, actually, bringing it back to the to the finals. You said they swept the three games. Did you were the three mm-hmm. games like interesting to watch or were they just stomps? Well, um, I only saw highlights because the game was on Saturday and we were camping. Um, right. But uh, the first two were stomps. The, the last one was like a 45 minute uh, game. But the, from what I was looking at w- between the drafts, um, they just outplayed the Chinese team. So, oh really? Hmm. Yeah, it was part of the. I don't think well, anybody was like. I don't. I don't. Th- I don't think any uh, any of the Chinese teams were kind of ready to play uh, the European style game. They all prepared for each other because they're like, well, you know, they aren't uh, they aren't winning or anything like that. Like they're the last team there. Someone's going to eliminate them, and it'll just be like an all China finals or whatever. And so I think they maybe weren't completely ready for it. Um, mm-hmm. They also used like uh, this hero called uh, Necrophos, and it kind of fucked uh, the other team. Um, so they they weren't really playing that in their meta. They were playing other heroes and things like that. So just overall, like it seems like their preparation wasn't as good, um, even if they were the better team. But I mean, to get swept three zero is uh, a pretty big uh, deal, especially in the finals. So yeah, I mean, yeah, they were just following the script, the though, right? 
<laughs> yeah, I mean it's a, it's an odd year, so you know we we knew that uh, Team Liquid had to win. Uh, also, like I said, everybody gave them their energy, um, held out their hands for Goku. Um, it was the Dota and spirit said, bomb. You know, <laughs> yeah, and just just dropped it on China. <laughs> Well, I mean, sometimes watching those stomps when you don't expect it are, are more interesting than like a close game just because it's cool to see them kind of wreck. But <clears throat> right on. We'll definitely uh, keep our, our eyes, you know, looking at the uh, new uh, Valve card game. Keep you guys posted mm-hmm. about that in the future. Um, and then, you know, next year, Dota International will be around and we'll see if it's as crazy as this year with not having it with having a european winner or well, it's gonna have a chinese something. well chinese a, ch- It'll chinese, have chinese. a chinese team needs to win next year yeah oh because it flip-flops every year it's an yeah it's an even year so china's gotta uh, win oh okay got it all right well china good luck next year follow the script. <laughs> china number one follow the script yeah um china all right so one. in in keeping consistent we just talked about games so we're gonna now go ahead and talk about one of our other animes that we're all watching, Gamers, another fun one to watch. I have to say this episode was hilarious. Like, I I haven't laughed so much in watching an anime episode since the Konosuba, like, episodes were out. This shit was just so funny. With all the misunderstandings that keep happening, everyone keeps thinking somebody is into somebody else, and then, and then there's the main character who's making Seaweed Head think that... She, He's BL with fucking uh, yeah. cool guy Urahara. Yeah, like it's just I was laughing like a lot. It, it was so funny. Um, did, did you guys both watched it, right? Just want to make sure before mm. I start talking about it. Okay, did, did you guys get as big a kick out of it as I did? Yeah, I mean, I think I was the first one to watch it. And then I was like, wait, did you guys see it yet? And you guys were like, no. And I was like, oh, well, I can't talk about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It was, uh, it was, as you said, it was really funny. Basically, every time someone tried to say, like, tried to fix a situation, they ended up making it worse because mm-hmm. they're working off of knowledge that we don't have. And so they're just like, oh, yeah, you know, I totally fixed it. I just told, like, I just told, uh, like, Amano just tells Chiaki, like, oh, because she, she sees him and Augury, like, at the, at the diner. Um, through the window and so he runs out he's like no like she's the best she's just like the best girlfriend ever you know like so like don't even like try and like like interfere with shit and like he forgets to you know clarify that Augury is Urahara's girlfriend and so it just kind of sounds like he's saying that she's the best girlfriend ever like his girlfriend and then Chiaki kind of gets you know like a little like irritated at that she's like she's like okay okay <laughs> fuck you uh, okay <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, okay and. and and so like basically like those are the kind of misunderstandings that started happening like tendo she's all like oh like you like chiaki and uh amano are like in in this whole like gamers meetup thing like you guys are in it for each other and they're like yeah but like they, they don't understand <laughs> what she means by that and so, like, she thinks that, like, they're doing this thing because, like, you know, they're, like, together. Whereas, like, they're just like, yeah, we're in it because, like, we want to help each other, like, find friends or whatever. So that kind of shit. Even though the normal normal reaction when you, someone like Tendo sees a girl and a guy like Amano and Chiaki calling each other by first name is, oh my god, they're going out, they're so close, they call each other by first name. Where that didn't even happen this episode, which was, but yet shit still was being misunderstood. So I was just like, this is just hilarious. She's just paranoid. <clears throat> She's just like, oh my god, oh my god, he he has this other girl. Oh, oh what's going on? The, and then during that same well, scene, though, then, uh, Augury popped up. Yeah. Just poking her head in. <laughs> What were you saying, Drew? That's what I was going to say. It's just like Augury is like in the background and then sees uh, Tendo and Uihara. And you're like, why are they like so close? Like, what's <laughs> going on here? 
And meanwhile, Uehara is like, these two idiot star-crossed lovers, like, don't even fucking understand what the <laughs> hell is going on. And he's, like, all close to Karen. And Agiri, like, f- sprints off, be like, be like, fuck, like, he's into her now. And then, you know, uh, Amano chases after her. And then they have their whole misunderstanding. And it's just, like, one misunderstanding after the other after the other leading to our BL incident. Um, so it was just, it was just like, a funny... It was just a funny, uh, you know, happenstance over and over again. It was just, it was, it was a good episode and good pacing. The other one I was laughing at a lot is yours when you were mentioning the star-crossed lovers or whatever. He's talking to Chiaki and she's literally saying the exact same things that about Amano that video, saying. that phone video game <laughs> that Amano was saying. And she's like, "Well, there's just something nice about talking to someone who you don't know who they are. I feel really close to this person. <laughs> They're just playing the same video game, and yet in real life, they just hate." each other they like actually hate I, each other i don't necessarily think so these funny. two idiots they just say they hate each other because yeah it's probably like the first time they've had a fight with someone they're like you know close to right mm. someone that they talk they're to they're passionate regularly. about the subject yeah. and things like that mm-hmm. yeah it's just too funny this whole episode just cracked me up i i it was a good like light-hearted episode and it'll be funny to see what happens in the next episodes i'm sure it's gonna be a lot of awkward like just misunderstanding kind of situations between because we had augury poke her head in he's like oh sorry i had plans with her and then amano just runs off and then he tells chiaki that he's basically dating her very like up front he like even puts a fist out and he's like so there and like I'm like what the fuck and then she doesn't even i like that she doesn't even pick up on it she's like wow way to go you're so cool like yeah. <laughs> I just think like she's congratulating him. It's just ridiculous. I can't wait for the whole punchline, you know, like where yeah. they find out that they were misunderstanding things. I just can't wait for that, you know, to yeah. happen. It's going to be funny. And I'm sure there will be more incidents where uh, our main character grabs a uh, cool guy's hands and people think that they're, that they're together. Gay. Yeah. Yeah, that they're gay. I'm waiting for when Tendo sees something like that, and she's like, what? Like, super thrown off. No. That's what I'm waiting for. She'll just be like, <laughs> wow, Amano is so cool. Ah, <laughs> oh, he's so such a good friend. <laughs> uh, but all in all, good episode with a good punchline coming. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, but one of the other shows that I don't currently watch, but I have been... I have been told it. I should watch it. I would probably like it. So maybe one day I'll catch up. How many episodes in is uh, the show I'm talking about? Is Kakeguri? Um, how many episodes in is uh, is that show Six. so far? Six. Six. Oh, so Six. if I'm gonna catch up, I should start soon. You should probably um, just start tonight. Yes. <laughs> tonight, I'm gonna go to bed. That's tonight, dude. <laughs> uh, that's tonight. That's two tonight for me, dude. Um, but you two are watching it, so. I know uh, you guys wanted to talk about it, so I'll throw it over to uh, who whoever wants to lead that. Anybody have something they want to talk about specifically? <laughs> Go for it, Rolando. Uh, well, so I guess in the previous episode, we got the, con- um, the conclusion to uh, the, the whole student council, like, debt shit you know they're like consulting the debts mm-hmm. and having the council like pay back these debts if you kind of win it's like they're playing the Indian poker stuff and uh, we have Mary and Yumiko they win huge they win like a shit ton of money and put that mm-hmm. dude that tried to fucking rape Yumiko into like huge debt and um mm-hmm. Jesus, I'm missing out on something. <laughs> um, basically, what happens is like, okay, so now there's this aftermath. Um, no, Mary's no longer a Mike, so she's no longer a a cat, little like livestock person. A house pet. She's no man. longer a house pet. But Yumiko is like, she has enough money to pay her debt, but she's refusing to pay it because she wants to use the house pet status to challenge the student council president um, to mm. some sort of gambling. And she's like, um, so like people in the council is like in particular, the crazy beautician committee chick that just like mm-hmm. fingers herself with guns. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
she <laughs> is like, all right, well, I'm going to fucking capture her and like force her to gamble with me and locks her in a fucking dungeon. <laughs> yeah. He locks her in a dungeon and is like, all right, we're going to play like this game where like you have to guess what the dealer put, put these cards and match it. And then if you get more right than the other person, you get to fucking shoot a loaded gun at them. But it's like Russian roulette. So it's like you load as many bullets as you want. And then you like they throw them into a, a fucking pit and randomizer. Yeah. You pull out a gun and hopefully it has bullets in it and you kill the other person, which is like, OK, weird. But it is. I mean, Murder. if you finger yourself with guns, you probably would <laughs> enjoy this. So well, she's she's crazy as shit. Yeah, she's like. she's fucked up. Not even she said like not even the student council president will will play with her. So yeah, <laughs> only someone as crazy as her like Yumiko would would play. Yeah, <laughs> we get it, we get also like a little bit of backstory on Yumiko and like maybe why she's so crazy. Her sister's in like a mental ward, <laughs> um, and kind of what you were saying too, Rolando is like she has like infinite money pretty much it's like assumed or like she has like a ton of assets so like she doesn't care if she's in debt like at any point in time she could rise out of it yeah that's why the student council basically says like you don't have to do like this life card um bullshit and like mary is out of it because she's out of debt now because of the game uh winning the game in the last episode um so they're both like out of this like life debt uh or like life plan um basically we're scenario it, it told her if she didn't pay off her debts she would marry some dude and get you know, like marry a senator and have like four kids like you planned out their <laughs> yeah. life in like an awful way that they they don't want or whatever um but uh, and another interesting that kind of happened besides, you know, shooting each other with Russian roulette guns and all that good stuff. Um, we see Mary gets called into the student council room and says, like, you know, you guys uh, kind of fucked us uh, with that debt. Like nobody's like ever caught on to that loophole uh, in the consolidation game. And, uh, you know, we kind of. It kind of sucks that you did that, but we kind of like like that and appreciate that. And so they offer Mary like a spot on the student council. A couple of things that I thought about that is maybe like they're expecting crazy gun finger bitch to like die in the game that <laughs> she's playing with uh, Yumiko. <laughs> like she's going to get shot and like be, be dead and like they need somebody else to replace her on the student council or they like want to use her to kind of turn against uh, Yumiko because they're, they're not like friends, but like they, I think they respect each other um, to some extent and they're going to like, have them turn against each other sort of deal yeah um that's probably more likely that's what i think <laughs> but uh yeah so it's a l- little interesting plot development uh, this is another one that i see it's like the episode ends and you're just like really you're just gonna like cliffhanger me like that like we get cliffhangered where yumiko tells crazy bitch like don't pull it you better not pull that trigger <laughs> you better not do that like you're not gonna want to do that it's like she's it's like it has the gun how does she get that confidence <laughs> it's like the right right so it, it, it's just like gun in your face like your brains are going to be like splattered everywhere but you're like don't <laughs> don't you do that <laughs> but uh it, yeah it, it's it's a it's a super good show i recommend watching it um if you're kind of thrown off though by like the etchy sort of style like it's probably not for you we have like crazy bitch straddling um one of the main dude characters and like getting off on it yeah, and she's like, like getting off on him <laughs> And then, like, she's, like, <laughs> licking the gun and, like, she licks a bullet and she's got, like, a uh, a uh, tongue stud and, like, things like that. So, it, it's on the edgy side. Like, I appreciate it. Like, it's, it doesn't detract for yeah, me. It's, it's, like, just enough. It, it's, it's like, um, edgy, but, like, it's, it's, like, stylized. So, it's not, mm-hmm. so, it's, I kind of, like, we've already made this, um comparison before but like it's kind of etchy in the sense that um shokugeki is is etchy so it's like mm-hmm. it's a very like stylized like etchy it's not like hajimete no gao where it's just like here's a cooch and we're just gonna <laughs> show it to you you know <laughs> like it's not like that where it's more like someone is getting off to a gun because they're absolutely batshit crazy and like that's just a way to like through exaggeration to show like how crazy they are. How and nuts. if you've if you've seen a studio Mappa show like 
that's pretty status quo for for what they what they do. So interesting. So what I got out of this was um, crazy gun fingerer girl and some dude raped some person. What? Yeah, kind of. No one <laughs> raped anybody. Yeah, sure. But <laughs> I mean, she uh, got off to like straddling. Uh, yeah. What's his name? Uh, Ryota. See, essentially uh, rape. No. Yeah, he got. Uh, raped. I'll probably, I'll probably check it out uh, soon here. Um, maybe like tomorrow or something. But um, it sounds interesting. So I mean, I don't mind etchy shows. Etchy. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll just have to find the time and then spam six episodes and catch up so that I don't get any spoilers next week. But um. <clears throat> Last thing here we got on our agenda. I know Rolando, you wanted to talk quickly about another show you're watching. So, uh, what was what show were you uh, wanting to talk about? Um, well, you haven't seen the last three episodes of Princess Principal, and I have not. You should just you know catch up on that. But I'll, I'm going to mm-hmm. talk about this latest episode of A Centaur's Life, which mm-hmm. um, it's a it's slice of life. And, like, you know, it's been pretty much fair for, like, a slice of life. Um, it's just, you know, the subject matter is, like, what if instead of humanity, devo- like, evolving from primates, they evolved from, like, b- various different mammal species? Um, and I guess, in a sense, like, if people from Antarctica were evolved from snakes. Um, <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> it, it's just, you what? know, like, a, an absurd premise. But like, right. <laughs> especially for, you know, a slice of life, but uh-huh. it's, it's been pretty like entertaining, um, so far. And, but like the latest episode for some reason was like, had like a lot of serious subject matter. And I was just like, what? That's kind of weird. Like all of a sudden, like this slice of life show is like talking about shit like, um, uh, like in particular, like the class of rep, she's a. She's like a an angel person, so she has wings like an angel on her back. Um, like obviously, like evolved from some sort of like bird, I guess. And then like they describe like, oh, like she's an angel person because like she has a halo, but like the halo is actually just part of their hair. Um, and so she like her dad is like a cat per is like a cat guy, and um. She, like, I don't know what happened to, like, the mom. Like, I'm guessing, like, the mom passed away or something. Because, like, she's, like, the eldest of four kids. So, I mean, that's a lot of kids, you know, like. Are the rest cats? Um, Two of them are cats. Is it two or three? Maybe there's five kids. I just, I can't remember. <laughs> there's She's got a lot of younger siblings. But, like, and then, like, what the youngest is, like, has angel wings and, like, a and cat ears. So like, hmm. you know, the, the, both genes were dominant in that one, I guess. So you can <laughs> probably guess that the mom was an angel person. Um, and, uh, so like she has this conversation with like her father who is a painter and she's like, oh, you're cooking dinner. Like she was expecting to be cooking dinner. Cause like she takes care of like the younger, the younger sisters. And she's like, are you really a painter? Are you really an artist? Because like, you don't seem to have the same drive as like most, you know, artists do because all they do is like, they obsess over their art. Whereas like, you're trying to be a responsible, a responsible father and an artist. And so she's like, kind of introducing this dilemma. Like, well, if you, if you want to actually be successful as an artist, maybe you should stop trying to be a good father and just focus on on that and like regardless of whether your daughter hates you for not being there and like doing stuff like at least you're like she'll respect you for you know trying to be you know the best artist or the best painter out there and so like he's just like I can't be both she's like no and then I'm just like, why the fuck is this like, this is such a heavy topic. Like, why is this like being covered? <laughs> <It's just laughs> and why is the daughter telling that to her father? <laughs> I think it's like her way of encouraging him, you know, like, because it's just an odd way. <laughs> he, he's been like, you know, shirking his 
um, his art to, you know, work part time and like provide for the youngest sibling who is like kind of sick. And, um, you know, essentially like he's got like a shit ton of daughters to take care of. So like, um, he needs the money and he's cut obviously if you're like a hungering artist, like you can't take care of like four or five kids with feed them paint. dude. You can't yeah, like a painting that you probably don't finish for a while because you know, shit. <laughs> Cause you're not Van Gogh. <laughs> yeah. Cause he's not Van Gogh. Dude, just feed him paint, dude. Yeah, feed them paint. Just feed them the paint. With lead. Yeah, they'll be fine. Lead paint. Yeah, exactly. They'll be okay. They're angel people. Yeah. Except that some of the younger siblings are cats and some are hybrids. Cat angels. It, everyone knows that the demons are better. Look at Satanya. Satanya, you son. Satanya, son. All, that's, all, that's all you gotta, that's all you gotta <laughs> know. Oh, so you like the demon character then? Yeah, yeah, Satanya. No. The demon's a lolly. I knew you would like her. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> so I knew it. Not, at least I'm not a Canadian I'm not a Canadian. Yeah, at least you're not a Canadian, so dude. <laughs> <laughs> so you're safe. You're safe. <laughs> at least I'm not Canadian. It's <laughs> <laughs> a new insult. <laughs> well, at least I'm not Canadian. <laughs> you Canadian. Except just the so Canadians knows. would be like, hey, at least my president's not Trump. <laughs> <laughs> just so everyone knows, uh, I don't have anything against Canadians. Every Canadian I've met so far has any, been a wonderful person. I don't have against Canadians <laughs> either or against fellow Americans. <laughs> yeah, but they hate people named Nicholas. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right. Well, so basically it sounds like this show, it, it would be like if all of a sudden Restaurant to Another World got super serious. Yes. Instead of just talking about food. Yes. Okay. I, I can understand. Except if all the of a slice sudden of life in like, this is better than Restaurant to Another World. Because the slice of life in Restaurant to Another World is super repetitive. Yeah. It's like, oh, customer comes in, talks about food, episode ends. <laughs> I've gotten kind of bored yeah. uh, recently. But anyways, um, I think that's all we have today on our agenda for episode 19. Um, I just want to mention one more thing. We mentioned it last week. If you know anyone who is a graphic designer and they're affordable or perhaps they're a listener and they would like, you know, enjoy uh, or be willing to create a, uh, a new logo for us. And, you know, if they're affordable, we can see if we can work, you know, something out to pay them. This is a hobby for all of us. So we're not trying to spend a ton of money. If you're a listener and you just want to make something for us and you want to shoot it to our email and we could talk about it and stuff like that, go ahead and do that at um, on anime or on the WordPress. We've got the contact page. It'll link you right to the email when you send something through there. Um, as always, you know, check out our Twitter, Anime on Draft, um, or it's at Anime on Draft. You can, you know, find out when our newest episodes are out, any cool things we might be doing. Um, <clears throat> and then you'll get, you know, notices on there about when uh, Drew makes his uh, Monogatari uh, vlog thing. I don't know what Yee. to call it. Um, also, Yee. check out, you know, SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube. You can get all our episodes there. Um, and then always they're all available on WordPress. So definitely check all that stuff out. But for today, that's all we've got. We've uh, enjoyed making this newest episode. We hope you guys enjoyed it too. And with that, later on, everybody. Bye. Probably stay away from this marshmallow stout. <laughs> it's probably a good decision, yeah. yeah we all rated it pretty low. <laughs>